Welcome back to the Hoosier Nation. We're talking everything Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Today we'll be talking about a recap of the Olympic group stage women's soccer match between Canada and Japan. But before we talk about this, I want to do another quick disclaimer that this is being recorded late, given that the, as I mentioned, the U.S. video, given the times and the days that the, they're playing over there in Japan, it's halfway across the world, and most of the games are live over here on the Eastern Time Zone around 4:30 or even 6:30 in the morning. And what I said to do, I was just going to watch the highlights and try and analyze and give you guys my best uh, thoughts. And it's, that's why these are going to be really short videos. So I'm just going to probably just pick one thing to talk about and that'll be it. We will still go through our typical lineup, formations, and starting and game summaries and all that. But instead of just talking about a broad number of topics, we're just going to talk about one just to keep it short. Given that I don't have any details provided by what I've only given thanks to the Olympics. And so, without further ado, um, we go to the Canada-Japan game where Canada women have tied Japan 1-1. And the starting lineup, they said Stephanie Labe in the starting the keeper position with Chapman, Zodowski, uh, Buchanan, and Lawrence. By the way, they played a 4, it looks like they played a 4-2-3-1. So yes, 4-2-3-1. And that's your defense. So once again, Chapman, Zodowski, Buchanan, and Lawrence. And then your um, center defensive, you got your Quinn and Scott. And then in your midfield, you have Michelle Prince, Fleming, and Becky with Sinclair as the sole striker. Now we go to basically the game summary. Or in the sixth minute, we have Michelle Prince sends a ball into Sin, uh, to Christine Sinclair. Christine Sinclair hits it off the post one time. It rebounds off the though, and she has another go at it, it's, and she scores. 1-0 Canada. I think that's a big milestone goal for her. Maybe I think she's in the 300 goal club now with a few other US MNT, uh, US WNT players. But um, it's she has Canada on the board. It's 1-0 Canada. And we go all the way to the 43rd minute where Japan has a great look, but it's blasted over the net. No threat there. 47th minute, Michelle Prince has a brilliant look, but it goes wide. And it's still 1-0 Canada. And then in the 48th minute... Um, Tanaka for Japan gets a ball in, but collides with Stephanie Labe. Now, at first, in the highlights, it really cut just cut to the next scene, which I'm going to talk about in the next summary. But here, it looks like they, Stephanie Labe, or uh, once he ran into, it looks like they did get the ball. But however, it looks like going on later, there's a penalty. It ended up being going probably going the VAR, and it ended up being a penalty on Stephanie Labe because she's also got a yellow card apparently for that, and so. I'm guessing maybe if they went to VAR and reviewed it and determined that she did not get the ball. She said she got all of Tanaka, which led to the penalty for Japan. That's just my guess. I mean, I have no idea what happened between the 48th minute and the 53rd minute. I just know the highlights skip right to the 53rd minute where Japan has a penalty as Tanaka herself steps up to take it. However, it's saved brilliantly by Stephanie Labe and it's cleared by Canada. Also, we got to mention that Stephanie Labe during that tackle, what did get look appear to get injured, and in the 58th minute she can't continue after that apparent injury, but it's subbed out for Sheridan as the key Canada's keeper. So we have a keeper change here in the 58th minute. 60th minute, Canada sends a ball in, but it's spilled by the Japanese keeper, and there's a scramble. A scramble ensures in front of the net. However, it's eventually tapped in by Canada, but there's an offside call, so there is therefore no goal. Still 1-0 Canada, though. But we go to the 84th minute where Japan just sends a brilliant ball over the top. And it's one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Hab Habi Hab forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, but it looks like Habichi um, is one-on-one -on -one Sheridan. He actually catches her off her off guard, off her line, chips her, and it's into the back of the net. It's 1-1. Japan has leveled the match, and that's the way it would end. Canada almost had it, but they fall short. And, but they do get the point, so they did not lose, but they don't get the three points, but they do tie. So it's a bummer, but they didn't lose. Then we go to our stats where uh, Japan outshot Canada 13-7. to seven. Four of the shots for Japan were on target to Canada's two out of seven. Three fouls to four fouls. Uh, Japan had no yellow cards, but Canada had the one. I think it was Stephanie Labe for that tackle. No red cards, however. Um, zero offsides for Japan, the Canada's two offsides, five corner kicks apiece, and uh, Japan had no saves, and Canada had three saves. And um, 
There we go. Now, though, I said the one moment I want to talk about and just keep it short is, to me, there's two standout players I like to, I like enjoy watching during the highlights at least were Christine Sinclair and Stephanie Labe. Christine Sinclair, of course, scored the goal to give Canada the point, almost the win. Um, it's okay, though, but it looks like it is a mother milestone for her. She scored Canada's 300, uh, or scored herself her 300 goal. And she's now in the 300 goal club with a few other, as I mentioned earlier, U.S. women's team players. So a big moment for her. Christine Sinclair is another, she has reached another milestone. And then, of course, Stephanie Labe with that penalty save, even though that one was kind of weird. I mean, I had to look at it again, but I know the tackle it appeared that um, she was almost there, but like she almost got the ball, but it looks like she did get a little bit of um, Tanaka for Japan. But... Um, so I guess the right call was made, however, she saved it anyway, so, um, however, she did take a yellow card for us. I think if yellow card suspension is a thing in this Olympics group stage tournament, that she's got to be careful, which, um, hopefully she will be in the future coming out and deciding when they can clear the ball away, but great save from her before she had to leave the game for that injury, but, um, those are my two standout players that I enjoyed, uh, I think that helped hold this Canadian women's team together. It's Christine Sinclair and Stephanie Labe. Uh, everyone else also probably did a good job, although I, once again I can't really say in detail because we're only I was only given a few clips and cuts. So, but just judging from what I saw from the highlights, looks like Christine Sinclair had a big say in this one, just like Stephanie Labe also had a big say to hold Canada women to just a point. But um, that pretty much does it for this game. If you like this uh, video, make sure you like, share, subscribe it, tell all your friends. That um, also, they tell our friends that the Olympics are underway.